Thanks, Steve. Uh, as Steve mentioned, I've been working and living here in Taiwan for 15 years, but during that time period, I also managed to visit 30 different countries around the world. 30 different countries. So you might say I'm a kind of a guy who's seen some things in life before. But actually, the truth is, I was kind of like Helen Keller's uh, idea here. I didn't, I've seen a lot of things, but I didn't really have a vision. I had a vague idea about my career. I was doing kind of cool stuff, but I didn't really have a vision for what my future was going to be about and what the important thing my life was going to be until I ended up in the place that you see in those first two pictures, which is Timbuktu in northern Africa. And uh, in that place, which is in literature, in Western literature, known as like the furthest away place in the world from civilization, I discovered that actually it's true. <laughs> There's a place with no roads, no power, no internet, and no TV. You can't have the internet, you can't have TV, and you can't have radios, and you can't have all those things with no power. And with no roads to get out there, well, then you don't really have the power to make those things happen. So wh when I got out there, I sort of took a little walk around. And you could sort of get an idea here from some of the pictures I've taken of what I could see. And this is what the local people who live in Timbuktu see when they go out for a walk every day. Which compared to what you see when you live here in Taiwan, when you walk down the streets, is quite different. I'm not going to say which one's more beautiful, but I would say there is a lot more information coming from this particular view if you're walking down the street. Uh, but the other thing that's interesting about us living here in Taiwan, a technically advanced nation, is we can see beyond what's just out on the street. We can get on our TVs, we can get on our uh, computers, now on our phones, and we can actually see the whole world and the things that are going on in other places. And what's even more incredible, those devices that we use, they have their own eyes. They can actually see things. So, you know, my phone, it's, it can see something, it can ca have that vision, and it can capture things also. And what's cool about that is your eyes and your phones and your computers, they're all networked. Your eyes send information to your body and your brain to tell you what to do with things and how to make decisions and how to recognize things and how to learn things. And your devices are all connected to each other as well, and they can share information and share their vision amongst everything. Now back here in Timbuktu, they don't have those things. So what they see is the radio, if they're lucky. If they've got a friend with a friend who's 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 got a radio, they might have heard something, <laughs> but haven't seen too much, to be honest, except for the view. So we showed up there, and we uh, brought them some solar panels and a satellite connection to the internet. It goes right up to a satellite, gets the internet down there. And we brought some other equipment, too, that made it possible to connect the internet to a PC, which you can see in the picture here, and some batteries to store all that power that the sun was giving them all day long so they could juice up and make sure they have enough uh, power to get all over the internet every day. And also, we also brought them a TV set so that they would have a power to see programming and things like that that they wouldn't normally be able to see. And the TV set was shared in the window of the local mayor of the village's place so that all the people in his village could come there and watch TV. And then they could all see something. So we get all that equipment together and we invited all the villagers to come and sit down and kind of watch TV and watch and hear about what's going on on the internet. And we got everything kind of working properly and the power is connected and it was all going quite nicely. And then they saw their first thing on the TV. And the first thing on their TV was an airplane landing on the news. So this airplane lands, and a bunch of people get out of the airplane. It's a delegation from France coming to visit Mali, which is where Timbuktu is. And these people went crazy. <laughs> what the hell is a, a plane, right? It's like they'd never seen a plane before. They had no idea what people are getting out of a plane. Where does it, how does it fly? How does it do? Their entire world changed instantly from that moment in a dramatic way. They... Their vision just suddenly went so far beyond what they could see normally. So after that experience, I started thinking about this problem. And I realized, actually, this isn't just a problem with people who are living in emerging markets who don't have problems with technologies. Most of us can't see a lot of things that everybody else can see. I can't see things that are going on in Russia every day. I have no idea what's happening in the US most of the time. We just don't really have that ability to have that vision. We can't see what everybody else sees. And that started me thinking about what my vision would be. Like, what could, what could I do? How could I help solve this problem? And so uh, this year, years later, after thinking about it and working on this problem, trying to figure it out, I've started my own business with a partner to create software that will allow everybody in the world to see what everybody else can see when they want. Because I think the interesting thing will be, if you guys can all see what I can see, and we can see what others can see, what will your vision be? <laughs>